HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Everyone, welcome to today's edition of HCAM News. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy, here to fill you in on what's happening in Hopkinton. On today's edition of HCAM News, we have the latest Hopkinton Hiller highlights as it was a busy week in sports last week. We have scenes from the annual Hopkinton Day celebration, plus much more. But first, here are some of the latest select board happenings. The select board got an update about the progress of the proposal to be put forward at town meeting for the town of Hopkinton to comply with the state's MBTA communities law. So that's gonna to go to the planning board, uh, probably not on Monday, but at the likely at the next meeting on October 7th. So they, they're presenting three options. Correct. Are they making recommendation on any of those three? Is Zach making a recommendation? Yeah. So they've ranked them. Uh, they prefer the one that went to town meeting in May as the top choice. The second choice was the Walcott Valley downtown sub-district. And then the third choice would be the uh, Indian Brook condos. Okay. But that's up to the planning board to decide which one, the, which one or multiple they want to move forward. Spoke to town council today about that, and there is a possibility of moving two forward to town meeting to have town meeting choose between the two. This new law requires that an NBTA community shall have at least one zoning district of reasonable size in which multifamily housing is permitted as of right and meets other criteria set forth in the statute. The previous attempt to pass an article in order to comply with the state MBTA communities law failed at the 2024 Hopkinton Annual Town Meeting back in May, falling short of the required majority by eight votes. Three proposals by the Zoning Advisory Committee are being moved forward for debate. John, do you mind sharing uh, a little bit of the rationale for the three options that the ZAC uh, committee is sending forward? Just kind of what's their thinking behind each one of those in just a couple of minutes so we can get, get a little context for why. Sure, so there's three criteria, and I probably said this ad nauseum, so there's three criteria that we have to meet. The capacity, the unit capacity, which is 750 units, that's not 750 that have to be built, but that's how many have to be zoned to be allowed. Um, the 50 acre minimum, and then the 15 unit per acre density uh, across the whole district. And so they're trying to balance getting those 50 acres and kind of just over 50 acres so that we're not going too much over 50. Getting those 50 acres, but then having the other parameters match up so that we can meet the other criteria. Uh, and also, one of the things that Zach has been uh, working with is finding parcels that are not imminently developable. And so they found these larger parcels with condo developments that um, are already multifamily near downtown uh, or near the train station and are likely not going to be developed in the next five to ten years because people are already living there. Um, and so that was really the rationale to try and get a little bit from what the people are saying we don't want more development and then we still need to meet the criteria. So for an existing neighborhood um, that's fairly dense by Hopkinton standards already, is that neighborhood at risk of getting additional density placed on the, that parcel? Or is that density already count towards the numbers? So we're just putting it in the mix to... to for like the condo like units? For Indian condo Brook, for example, yeah. So, or, or across from Carboni's there. Like, if there's already condos in place, do we have to add more or... Do, no. So, we no, so the compliance is just having the zoning in place. It's not actually developing the units. So if you've got a development, the preserve, Walcott Valley condominiums or Indian Brook, those are all developed under special permits usually. Uh, I, don't, I know 
preserve was, I assume Walcott and uh, Indian Brook were. Um, but you'd have to amend the special permit, also get the buy-in from the owners, and it's just this process that would likely not be feasible in order to add units to them. So it would really be kind of overtaking the whole development and then redeveloping it as multifamily. And so it's not that you could really add units to increase that density on those uh, parcels right away. For more information about this, you could visit our website, hcam.tv. The Friends of Hopkinton hosted the annual Family Fun Day event at Hopkinton High School. The event attracted a big crowd of all ages and was another terrific success. Uh, it's going great so far. We're very pleased, especially after having it canceled last year because of the, the rain that rained us out last year. But yeah, just looking around now, there's a, we're really pleased with the turnout. Um, you know, I'd be reluctant if I didn't mention, we want to thank the many sponsors that have helped support uh, Family Day. Um, the crew, uh, the, uh, the committee, I'm one of the committee members, one of 20 committee members, and uh, we meet every month, even in the summertime, every month to put this one day together that's uh, several uh, months of advanced planning and it's over in seven hours, but it's, it's well worth it. It's a lot of fun. You can tell the crowd is having a good time. I get to do some of the announcing, which is a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, just a, just a diverse range of entertainment today. Uh, 11 food trucks here with so, a different variety of cuisine. Um, and, so, and certainly the activities. We've had thir about 30 organizations here and they're all providing their own, uh, their own special activity for the folks to enjoy. So yeah, they're very pleased. And on behalf of my wife, the president, friends of Hopkinton, Colette Cronin, um, we're very pleased with the turnout. Absolutely, and uh, I'm sure everyone's looking forward to a big fireworks show tonight. Yeah, it all culminates with the firework display. It's uh, a couple hours when it gets dark. Uh, this field will be packed with people. Um, the fireworks display is always the big hit, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be great. I'm, I'm trying to promote the fireworks as much as possible, but we know there's going to be a great turnout for it, so we're very excited about it. Absolutely, and it uh, looks like uh, a lot of uh, different games and activities for the kids this year. Uh, let's talk about some of those uh, different uh, activities you got for the kids. Yeah, with the activities, uh, well, yeah, the, the dunk tank isn't for the kids to, to get dunked, but those are the ones that are lining up to throw the ball. The kids really love the, doing the dunk tank. Um, but we've had uh, miniature golf, uh, bouncy houses, uh, a football toss, lacrosse uh, shootings, uh, shooting the lacrosse ball. Um, trying to think of some of the others, but the fire department is here letting the kids get inside the fire truck. Uh, police de Hopkinton Police Department here giving us a lot of support. So yeah, like I say, 30 different activities at the very least. So kids are having a great time, couldn't be happier. We're going to take a quick time out. A whole lot more HCAM news ahead. Don't go anywhere. HCAM is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by the Hopkinton Independent Newspaper and Online News Site. The newspaper reaches 100% of the homes and businesses in town, and the website is updated daily with exclusive Hopkinton content. Readers can receive a daily newsletter and breaking news alerts via email. Welcome back to HCAM News. It was a very busy third week of the fall season for the Hopkinton Hillers. Here are the latest happenings. In week three of the Hopkinton Hillers 2024-25 fall sports season, Hiller Field Hockey hosted Ashland on Monday, September 16th. Moves it up to Finnegan. In, gets it out in front, loose ball put in. Hiller strike. Elena Vallis makes it one to nothing. Elena Vallis nets the score and makes it a one to nothing game. That's how the score stayed until the third quarter. Over to trip, back to Katz, shot in. And that was actually uh, Alyssa Brown who. Knocks the shot in. We're knotted at one apiece. Alyssa Brown nets a score for Ashland, and it's a one-to-one -one game. It stayed that way until under a minute left in the quarter. Harry Finnegan set to 
send it in. Fowler gets it over. Back to Fowler, top of the circle. Shot, goal! Hillers retake the lead. Ella Fowler pops in the score and reclaims the lead for the Hillers. It was a two to one game heading into the fourth quarter. Here goes Nico Eustaris. Eustaris sends it over out in front, shot, and it's in. Ashley Forster reties the game at two apiece. Ashley Forster nets a goal for Ashland, and the game is tied at two with just over nine minutes left. Fowler trying to cut in. Loose ball. Back to Fowler, goes into Rante. Now out in front, and a shot, and it's in! And that score is by Elena Vallis. And the Hillers have reclaimed the lead at 1.31 left to go in the fourth quarter. Freshman Elena Vallis comes through with another score at 131 left to go in the fourth quarter. Vallis moves it up. The horn sounds, that's the game. The Hillers get the win. The buzzer sounds and the Hillers claim the 3-2 victory and improve to 2-4 and four on the season. Ashland falls to 2-4. and four. Also Monday night, Hiller Girls Volleyball hosted Ashland. Steve Sweetapple and Matt Clancy were on the call. Nice oh, sir, Liv. Herder handles that. Back set Back from live, Pacina in the net. That's it, Hopkinton takes the first set, 25 to 20. Herder, Vidi, outside, Pacina. Liv is there, Adriana. And that's it. Uh, that's it. Hopkinton takes the second set, 25 to 15. That was a great serve. Just Beatty just gets it over. Going outside to Adriana. That's oh, it. Down the line. 25-17. The Hillers earn the sweep over Ashland and improve to four and three on the season. On Tuesday, September 17th, boys soccer hosted Ashland. It was a scoreless game until early in the second half. Well, you see the sophomore defender, A.J. Bush, we get a whole lot of play time out there today. He impressed at the JV level. So we got the call up. Deflected just wide of the net. Along the end line, still in play. Kept in play by Chaplin, there's a header and a goal! Wow! Chaplin keeps it in play and Zach Bauschman cuts across and puts it in the left side of the net. Tori, but Millard just able to get a piece, throwing for the clockers. Into the box, and it's in! Right off the throw-in, and the clockers respond. Lucas Sariona knocks the game up at one apiece. Ashland responds just under five minutes later, and it's a one-to-one -one game. And it's in. Arthur Souza gives the clockers the lead on the PK. Souza hits the penalty kick. And the Clockers would go on to take the 2-1 to one win. On Wednesday, September 18th, Hiller Field Hockey, fresh off a big win over Ashland, hosted Medway. It was a scoreless game heading into the second quarter. Fowler gets by a Mustang, looking to close in. Sends it in front, and Elena Vallis puts it in. Elena Vallis nets the score three minutes and 33 seconds into the quarter and makes it a one to nothing game. That's how the score stayed until the third quarter. Here's Fowler looking to close in. And ran into the defender there. The defender just able to knock it away. Fowler sends it into the attack area. Trying to sneak through, a good feed by Lucy Mado to Mary Finnegan who puts it in. 
Mary Finnegan strikes a great pass by Lucy Mato. And Finnegan makes it a two to nothing game rather with 5.07 left in the third quarter. Over to Cordes. Knocked away, top of the circle. There's Ava Cordes and she pops it in. So the Mustang strike. It's a two to one game heading into the fourth quarter. Gillipudi up the far side. Cross to the middle, and that's it. The Hillers going to hang on for the 2-1 win. The buzzer sounds, and the Hillers hang on for the 2-1 win. Hopkinton wins their second straight game and improves to 3-4 on the season. Medway falls to 1-4. Also that night, Hiller Girls Volleyball hosted Medway. Matt Clancy was on the call. Oh, and Adriana gasses that one. Tough to handle for the Mustangs. Nice serve by Adriana. Hopkinton takes set number one, 25-16. 24-23. It's Mackenzie Klaus back to serve for the Mustangs. And into the net, and that will do it for set number two. Klaus with the serve, and good call there by Liv. That is out. Hopkinton takes the match. That'll do it, 25 to 10. The Hillers earn their second straight win and second straight sweep as they take it three matches to zero. The girls improve to five and three on the season. On Thursday, Hiller Boys Soccer hosted Medway. The Hillers struck early in the first half. Gets it in front of Zach Bauschmidt. AJ to Zach, here comes Zach, and it gets by the keeper, and then it's put in! Goal, Hillers! Knocking it in, it is JTS, Josh Tomasino Stewart. Just under 11 minutes in, Josh Tomasino Stewart makes it a one to nothing game. The Mustangs respond. Pedro Barbosa ties the game at one, with 16.51 left in the first half. And that is put towards the net and in! What a beauty of a corner that was! The goal scorer ended up being Harry Millar. Harry Millar puts the Hillers back on top. 57 seconds after Medway ties it, and it's a 2-1 to one Hiller lead. It would stay that way until the second half. There's Wielding putting it into the box. And the shot is blasted into the back of the net by Zach Bauschman. Goal, Hillers! Just under seven minutes into the second half, Zach Bauschman, assisted by Ian Welding, put the Hillers up three to one. Angeli sends it through. Along the end line, the cross, and it's in! A beauty of a pass by Weintraub, and Stott was flying up into the box. And just a perfect cross to hit Stott. Sends it in, oh, deflected, secondary shot is no good, and then a slide in, it's put in by Harry Millar! Harry Millar just took a slide at the loose ball and was able to knock it in to the left side of the net. Shador crosses in and it is put in. Shador with the cross to start. And Medway is back within one. A little push there. And a loose ball, and it is put in! I believe that was an own goal. It might have been Victor, I believe it was Victor Shador who got the last touch. I'll tell you though, there was clearly a push from behind. Champlin sends it back, wielding, into the box, and wrapped up by the keeper. The intense physical game would end in a four to four draw. What a battle it was. 
The Hillers are now 1-3-2 and two on the season. Medway is now 1-2-3. and three. What a crazy week it was at the Hiller turf. Hiller girls soccer was on the road this week. On Tuesday, September 17th, they took the win over Ashland by a final of 2-1. Maddie Recupero and Fotidi Grazos netted the scores for the Hillers. The Hiller girls were at Medway on Thursday, September 19th and took a dominant 5-0 win. Maddie Recupero and Nina TZ netted two goals apiece, while Elise Jacomi got her first varsity goal. The Hiller girls are now 6-0 on the season. And here comes your Hopkins and Hillers and ready to kick off the 2024 home opener for your Hopkinton Hillers. Pulls it down, rolls to his right, throws up the sideline, and that was nearly intercepted. Sokolowski gonna line it up under center once again, and he'll go power eye with Two backs lined up to the right. They'll pitch it to the up back. McCormack up the far side towards the end zone. And it looked like he was stopped just short. And this time they're going to go with a lone back set. Sokolowski takes the snap, pitches it back. The rush is to the near side. And he is going to be stopped for a loss. Back set once again. Sokolowski under center, hands it off. And up the middle he goes, and in for the touchdown, Brady McCormack. A one-yard touchdown run, and Medfield Warriors draw first blood. The touchdown comes at 10-24. Left in the second quarter. This drive started with four minutes, two seconds left in the first quarter. So quite a lengthy drive there, about five and a half minutes. The snap, the kick, and it is through. Hillers running backs get around the edge at all. Rivard back to pass, airs it out up the far Ooh. side, and it's knocked away. Once again, a receiver spread out to either side, and he is going to hand it off to McCormack, and McCormack, all kinds of room coming up the far side, breaking tackle after tackle, and he's brought down inside the 10. And this time he's going to pitch it to McCormack up the far sideline, right into the end zone he goes. A six yard touchdown run for the junior, Brady McCormack. Snap and the kick, end over end, and it is good. Out of the gun with the back to his left, takes the snap, play action, in trouble, brought down and the ball comes out. At the halftime break, it's Medfield 14. The Hopkinton Hiller is nothing. Medfield in control, but we have another half to play. Can the Hillers turn it around? We shall find out. Still plenty of time left on the clock, and this game's certainly not out of reach. And it's a run up the middle and some decent yardage there as he fought his way to the 20-yard line. On the run was Nathan Harris. And that is where the third quarter will end. Oh, oh it's blocked. blocked! Loose ball picked up and in the end zone goes number eight, Alexander Howley. Benson is out for the attempt. End over end, and it is through. First down. 2.52 to go, they move the, move the chains. Nice hard run there by Bernard. And they move the ball, so snapping it again. Very Rip nice. Yep. Yeah. Rivard gonna take this himself up the far sideline. And he's in! A 22 yard touchdown run for Julian Rivard and the Hellers are on the scoreboard. Winslow is out there to try to make it a 14-point game. Ooh, bad snap. Oh, bad snap, and they're gonna throw to the end zone. It's intercepted. Now he's gonna go back for an up for one. Wow, up uh, the near side, cutting across. Oh, they're gonna blow that. Is Taris, and they're gonna say he stepped out. 
You can't advance it on a, in high school, I guess. Three back set for Medfield. Sokolowski under center, hands it off, run up the middle, and that's a first down. A pickup of about four yards there. And that should just about do it. Halftime uh, really played well for them in the second half. They had very, a lot of trouble getting on the scoreboard, though, even though they were playing better. They were moving the ball on the ground, started to connect with some passes up down, right down the seam, and then really not able to punch it in a couple of drives. And they, were, you know, I think they, uh, they're going to be happy that they got scored on that last drive. It is time to inform you about some happenings in town you should know about. The Hopkinton Area Land Trust annual meeting will take place on Wednesday, October 16th from 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. at the Sanctuary, which is located at 249 Wood Street in Woodville. All members of the Hopkinton Area Land Trust and the community are invited to attend the Trust's annual meeting. The meeting agenda provides a review of the Trust's mission, accomplishments of the past year in acquiring and managing its conservation land in Hopkinton, and a short business segment. They look forward to hopefully seeing you at the Hopkinton Area Land Trust Annual Meeting. Our picture of the week, Hopkinton Hiller Football hosted their home opener in front of a packed house at David M. Hughes Stadium. Unfortunately, they would go on to fall short in the game to the Medfield Warriors by a final of 21 to 6, but it was a fun Friday night of football in Hopkinton. Upcoming town government meetings include on Thursday, September 26th at 7 p.m. We'll have the school committee meeting live on HCAM Ed. And then on Tuesday, October 1st, we'll have the select board meeting live on HCAM TV. To view all upcoming town government meetings, head over to hcam.tv slash gov, or for more information, head to the town website at hopkintonma.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News, but don't worry. Next week, we'll be back Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. For everyone at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. As always, we thank you for watching. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye, everybody. Hey.